you know, I, I got to a point where, you know, I, and I, and I share about this sometimes it's like, I was, I was too afraid to kill myself, but I didn't want to go on living either. Right. And I was 21 years old. Oof. So she watches every episode. We got to get Mike an M cup. An M I can't cup. be the only one with a cup with my initial on it. Are we rolling? That's great. Hey, welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. Thank you guys for listening. If you're watching, subscribing. If you're not subscribed, make sure to hit that button. There are some things I need to get out of the way, like just some custody stuff. Pay attention. This is important. It might be some of the most important words that have ever exited my mouth. Episode 100 is coming up. Whoa. I'm not exactly sure which one this is because I'm going to Sweden and we're banking a lot, but episode 100 is coming up. 100 motherfucking episodes of Impulsive. That's crazy. Let's not celebrate too much because we're, we're not there yet. We're not there but yet, we're but, close. and we have something big planned. We are going to do the 100th episode live. It's going to be live. This could be the birth of a new Logan Paul or the death of the current Logan Paul again. Hopefully it's not and we don't say anything too controversial, oh. but I feel good about it. I feel oh, good about it, boys. It's some risky bits. It's going to be three hours. So make sure you turn it, tune in for that. We're going to have, I think, two guests on, a lot of activities. It's going to be great. It's going to wow. be great. Yeah. Uh, number like two. Magic tricks and shit. Yeah. We could do magic tricks. Can we for auction sure. something off? Like, or just- We could auction Mike off. Yeah. Let's it's, do it. Yeah, I feel I, like that would raise, I, feel I feel like, like that'd be like strong. Right now, based on my current levels, that would probably raise a few fucking. Levels. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Your numbers are up, man. You're popping. Um, number two, Challenger Games. I announced mm. this last week. This is a big fucking deal. We are doing an event called the Challenger Games at the Long Beach uh, Memorial Stadium. It is uh, the biggest entertainers in the world getting together for a track and field meet. We're going to race. We're going to see who's the fastest. The winners get to donate money to a charity of their choice. It's going to be six. It's going to be live streamed with a donation link. So make sure you tune in for that. Be ready. Keep an eye out for who's participating. You're going to love it. Uh, what are you doing? Just motioning towards the the, the fucking climate control unit in here. Oh, you hot, just Mike? Can't. No, I'm not fucking hot. But at some point, I may get hot because someone always turns it off and it gets fucking hot. It is hot. Yeah. And also, I noticed this. I just took a shower. Stop turning I, it off. Yeah, stop, David. God dang you. You give your spot in the house, you just you turn off everything? Literally, you look like a fucking pilgrim as it is. Dude. What's wrong with you? You're still stuck on Plymouth Rock over there? That was your problem. Yeah. By the way, quick question. Well, hey. We just shot a podcast not more than 45 minutes ago. What did you guys do? In the break, in between the podcast. I, I'll tell you what I did quickly. Okay. I'll answer my own question, then you guys great. go. That's a great order. I, I love that order. I took, the reason why I bring this up is because I took a nap and I also masturbated. <laughs> and so that's why I had to go pee just now because I had to get the rest of the nut out of my penis, bro. Uh, what did you guys do? Yo, Mike. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Uh, that's not normal, bro. Which part of it? The nap? No, no, no. <laughs> Is it the nap? It's not, that it's not that it's not normal. It's just like, I think saying it yeah. so expressively, that's where it, I, it gets tricky for me. Yeah. I have I been very, I want to support my friend, but also what the fuck are you doing? I have been very uh, open about the fact that I nap for a long time now. It's a quick way for me to recharge. I'm talking about the nap, man. What, what's, go, what's going on it's here? It's the guys? masturbation part. Oh. Have you tried masturbating upside down like our sex expert said, our first guest? No, something I've, to consider. I've still been working on the air the, uh, balloon. <laughs> she wants you to levitate <laughs> and, 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 and jerk off. What'd you guys do? Um, I read a book. The whole a whole book in 45 minutes? Uh, two shit. chapters. All right. Well, yeah. you lied. Uh, goes for you. I, I I I didn't take a break. I was just, I took a, took a shower and then took a took a shower again. Uh, <laughs> two showers. No, listen. Hey, I and wanna, with the current water crisis, you're yelling at me about nothing. I, right? I, I, I want to say nothing? I want to say something. I want to. I have a message for my mom. Um, when you guys were growing up, did you ever have to that that struggle and that back and forth with your parents where it's like I want to get a dog, and then they say no, you can't get a dog. And you beg them and beg them and beg them and they never let you get a dog because that was the, the case at my mom's house. And it was so difficult to get her to get a dog. She just got a brand new dog. What is, Pam just got a brand new dog. And I have what'd a- she, I, What'd she get? I have a video here, but also like, what the fuck, ma? Because all of a sudden your kids aren't home and now you're all into dogs. You ain't into wow. dogs. And look at this. Isn't the dog? This is a little like- What is that This thing? is a little uh, rag and bone scrub toy. Oh my God. It's like a mini little demon child. Wait. Oh, okay. Brad, wow, Brad, Brad, where's the audio? Brad, where's the audio? We're good on my end. Uh, Are you plugged in? Brad, help. Are you uh, muted? I don't think so. Did you, did you get a little mute situation? I don't think so. Nobody likes it. Wait, oh, mute. shit. I saw her story. This was a pretty uh, pretty impulsive buy. Nice, nice. Hey, nice, like that? nice, that nice. Good. That book was... Nice cool. plug there, Spencer. Yep, I'm getting a little audio feedback. It's no problem. Hopefully it works now. Look at him. He's really cute. Yay! Yay! 
Puppy! Yay! Puppy! I didn't hear that once when I was growing up. And look at this little shit. Okay, he's pretty cute. No, I hate him. I hate him. Is it a Pomeranian? I think it's a Pom ski. I don't know what it is. But like, well, like what's good, Ma? Pam, why'd you do that? It was so hard for me to get a dog growing up. And like, like I said, like, I kind of feel like I got stabbed in the back of him being honest. Kind of makes me feel disgusting. Do you think, do you think he's living in your room back home? At this point, probably. He's using my toothbrush. Just taking dumps on your pillow. Yeah. What's the dog's name? Probably Mike. Really, they gave it a human name, huh? <laughs> I see a lot of that these days. I knew a couple dogs back in Connecticut. Bob and Henry. Is there is there a dog that's, named that's Mike? New. I've never heard of a dog named that's Mike. That's why it's funny. What do you think my dog is going to be named? Mark? Nope. It's going to be named Mike. Jimmy? That's, it was really easy. I just, you had already pitched the answer up to yourselves. Guys, this is a boring, this is a pretty boring conversation. Yeah. I was, You'd be I, surprised. Wait, no, no, but I'm going to spin it. I'm gonna, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm going to okay. spin it. I was bored on a, on a date this last week. I went on a date. Um, don't don't say the girl's name. You know her. Um, and I, I knew I was bored because she was, this is so bad. She Uh-oh. was talking. And we were outside on a patio. And I looked up at like the numbers of the address of the, the restaurant across the way. And uh, I started adding the numbers. <gasps> What'd you get? Of, it was 14. Wow. And uh, <laughs> once I got- So you didn't got, go the next step of adding the one plus the four? No. No, I should have, right? To get five. To get yeah. five. Back to five. But once I got 14, I was like, this is bad. I got I got a board. Yeah. And, and bro, like, fuck, she's going to know who she is. We were playing games. We were playing a Connect Four. And That's like, a f- exhilarating game. But, but I realized I am fucking ruthless when it comes to playing games with girls. I will not let them win. You know how you're supposed to let girls win? Not me. The moment a game's whipped out, nah, man. So it's my dick. And oh, I must, <laughs> I must figuratively, yeah. I must win the game. I love a good there's, dick joke. There's no, there's, there's no handouts for me. Only, no handouts, just hand jobs. <laughs> nice. Keep them going, man. I'm loving this episode so far. It's just dicks on dicks. Dude. Which is ironic because this is actually a yeah. really extremely great value-based podcast right. for any entrepreneurs out there. So if any of you are left, yeah. uh, we've already hit our dick quota. So we should probably just <laughs> move on to the guest. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Dick quota. Both of them who have dicks as well, which is a strange coincidence. Yeah. Well, only one of them is coming on, but oh. th- there there are two of them. Guys, I want to bring them on. Today's episode is a treat for any of the young entrepreneurs out there. We like to have fun here, but it's more fun to have fun when you have some money in your pocket. I'm just being honest with you. It's true. At one point, our guest was bouncing checks at the supermarket, dead broke and almost dead from drug addiction. Today, he's built multiple businesses, become a marketing and advertising expert, and he's now worth millions. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Adam Hyman. That's a long that clap. That was the best clap We're I've really seen going for it. so far. We've had. <laughs> that, how you doing? I'm good, man. That was a long clap. I don't that was know, amazing. I don't know how well deserved that nah, was. Nah, I feel like you deserve it. All right, man. And Thanks. the last name, I said it right? You did. Hyman? You did. Intact Hyman? Isn't that a thing? I heard about this. No, it's like it a is body a thing. Part? It is a thing. What is that? You, it is um, it's, uh, what a woman loses oh. during the first time she has sex. Oh, no. oh yes. Oh, yes. No, 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 no. Like Papa Cherry. We are. Papa Hyman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do we always just devolve back to genitalia? Why? Because everything's really close to it, if you think about it, at the end yeah. of the day. It's yeah. where we come mm-hmm. from, yeah. no pun right. intended. Yeah. <laughs> Truth. Hey, very true. Nice. Um, <laughs> Spencer. So, hey, welcome. Really Thank you very much. So, Thanks for having me. Of course, man. So sorry we had to open the episode with such a degenerate type conversation. But no, I think it's fantastic. You ever been bored on a date? Start counting numbers on an address? Uh, there was only my wife. Oh, no. <laughs> you can't say that. You can't say that. So you married her. Hey, he doesn't mean <laughs> No, no. Uh, yeah, no, of course. I mean, who hasn't, right? So so you are married now. I am. You got two kids. I do. And you make, and you have earned a lot of fucking money. This is true. Congratulations. Thank you very much. But it wasn't always Fast. this way. <laughs> just a little sound. No, no, it was definitely not. So you uh, you iterated to me outside, just outside there. Mm-hmm. You had a you had a severe drug addiction. I did. And, I did. And so and so did Mike. So maybe there's some synergy or something. We should try to connect on a level. I feel like we could do that. That's what podcasts are for. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. From you started at the age of what did you say? Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Bro, what were you doing at what the were age you, of twelve? What were you addicted to? Blocks. I was actually. Or, I would grind like, them up, snort them. <laughs> Candyland or some shit. Yeah, of course, bro. You what put is in it, your colon. 12 is early, dude. But what is a seventh grader? No, so, you know, like you, um, I started, uh, you know, I would like skip school and smoke weed or, you know, um, you know, I'm Jewish. So like I had a bar mitzvah like every other weekend that year. Okay. So you just like hit up the open bar uh, uh, all the time. Uh, so, I knew you were know, drinking like, at 12. I don't know. Nobody really gave a shit. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, so yeah, it just, it started off like that, man. Like skip school, smoke weed, drink when you can. And like, you know, I always felt, 
like really uncomfortable in my own skin, man, like my whole life. Right. So like every any time that I was able to to use or do anything like that, like, you know, I felt I felt OK. You know, and that's really all I ever wanted out of life was just to kind of like like feel OK, man. You yep, know, yep. and um, and like that did it for a while. Mm. Right. But that's but I mean, mm. like that's extremely fleeting. And right. Yeah. And, yeah. Of course. And dangerous and yeah. And yeah. Tons absolutely. Of adjectives to describe how not healthy that is. No. Absolutely. So. So I ran with that, and then it's the same that you hear from any other story like like this one, right? With where there's drugs and addiction and things that, you know, things involved like that. You know, you you lose jobs, you lose family, you lose friends, you alienate yourself, and and it got to a point where, you know, we I was I was telling you about this outside. It was like. You get to a point where you see everyone around you in, in your life kind of move on. You know, eventually people stop giving a shit. Mm-hmm. You know, people stop caring at a certain point and everyone just kind of like moves on with their life. Mm. And um, and then when you're still there where they leave like that, it's a pretty lonely place to be, man, mm. especially when you don't know how to get yourself out of it. Right. So, you know, I, I got to a point where, you know, I, I and I and I share about this sometimes it's like I was. I was too afraid to kill myself, but I didn't want to go on living either, right? And I was 21 years old. Oof. And, um, and I remember, you know, it's so funny, right? Because I remember, you know, and I had tried to stop a hundred times, man, for like, you know, for a job, for a girl, for a friend, yeah. for anything, right? You always try and do it for something that isn't, you know, for yourself. Mm-hmm. And, um, and every single time I failed, every single time. And I remember just getting to this point where I, I honestly, I don't even know why that time was different. I, I can't like, I mean, I wish I, there was like some profound thing that happened or something, but it was just kind of like, it was just kind of like, I knew that I couldn't keep going that way. And mm-hmm. I knew like I had made my mind up that like there had to be something more and I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to die. I'm, I'm always so fascinated uh, when that put my foot down stopping moment is and and he he described his a couple of times i i thought found his really interesting because it sounds a little bit like yours in a, in a way that you're not really sure why that time worked i mean yours was a little more yeah i mean mine mine was i was basically i was on death's door you know what i'm saying so my addiction was was to the worst evils and heroin and crack cocaine and shit that was just you know basically had my foot in the grave and so i was in a really bad place um and I, and I felt like I was going to die any day. Like I had, I had not slept in almost three weeks. My blood was just crawling. Like I was having just manic nightmares. It was just tre- night tremors. It was terrible. And uh, I got I got court ordered into rehab. So it made my life a lot easier. They said, you're going to go to rehab or you're going to go to jail, one or the other. And so that was great. I still had to make the decision afterwards to stay clean. And a lot of that had to do with my support system and not wanting to hurt people in my life anymore and wanting to make, and to your point, wanting to make my life a better place. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like I wanted to do better. I didn't want to die with the last thought people had of me as Mike, the kid that OD'd and died. Yeah. I'd never wanted that. You his, know what I'm saying? His road was extremely visceral and, and violent and just unhealthy every like negative like scary adjective i can use to describe his road he's making a book about it was yours like that in any way i mean look i you know i don't don't know about you but i i have a couple not yet right so like i was i was never homeless right Mm -hmm. i always had some a semblance of a roof over my head even if it wasn't the nicest of places right i still had a roof um there was still food in the fridge right but like you know, I had OD'd several times. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'd been in terrible car accidents, multiple, you know, ones. Um, you know, if like, you know, it's it's like kind of a cliche thing to say, but it's true, man. Like if life was fair, I wouldn't be here. Mm. You know? Mm. And that's and that's that's the fucking truth. Yeah. So um, you know, yeah, I mean, I think and, and look, there there's there's this there's a story, right, where they say, um, you know, because look, when I first, you know, and for me, you know, I'm not endorsing any fellowship or anything like that. But for me, I, I got clean in Narcotics Anonymous. And in August, I'll have 14 years clean, right? Congrats. Congrats, so, bro. That's no, awesome. Thanks, man. So you're, you're all, I got 10 years in uh, coming up in June. Actually, June 23rd was my clean day. Oh, nice, Dude, man. we just passed it. Sorry, nine years, nine years. Nice. Well, June I, 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 hope, nine I years. hope you never beat me. 
So yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. But I and I I did ninety and ninety in NA as well, so straight I. out of yeah. rehab, and then I didn't stay in it, and I I somewhat regret that because it is a great program. And once yeah. again, I'm not promoting, just like you're not. Yeah, but yeah, it, yeah, I, no, it's no, a great no. program for sure. No, so so what they say is is like you know as far as you know who had it worse or who whatever, right? That there's this there's a saying that goes, you know, if a if a three year old girl has like a stuffed animal, right, and that's that's her thing, her everything, right? Mm-hmm. That's all mm-hmm. she has. And then a year later, she loses it, right? The loss of having that is traumatic for that three-year-old, right? Pain is pain. Right, exactly. It's all relative. You have an, an 80-year-old, you know, an 80-year-old man that loses his wife, right? That pain is still, you know, pretty intense, right? But the pain is relative. Like, what's whose pain is more? Now, as, now as people, we rationally know that, like, it's, you know, worse to lose a human being, right? But in that moment, just the feeling of that pain mm. is the same. Mm. We, yeah. talk, we talked about, we talk this about this a lot. Mul- multiple times in the past few mm. episodes. I can't remember what the last one was, but it was basically about whenever this conversation comes up for you know, people who are watching this that are going through, through things or guests that we have on the show, that your pain is always warranted. Like don't ever, don't ever try to hide your pain and, and use perspective and understand that you do have things very good. And if you're watching the show, you have things better than people that can't watch the yeah. show because they're blind or they can't afford internet or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like understand your pain is warranted. Like we, Absolutely. Yeah. we understand it and, and you should, you should be aligned with it and it's, it's acceptable. Yeah, man. You know? Every, everyone's stuff is valid, dude. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, and that's, yeah. and that's important. Yep. And and so he, here's why your story is, is so interesting is cause you, you pulled quite the 180, Adam, uh, when you, you got off drugs at 21. Yep. And then when you were 23, what, what did you do that made you a multi multi-millionaire or the, what would yeah. become a huge, massive business or multiple? Yeah. So, so actually, I mean, look, so, you know, uh, in Narcotics Anonymous, they have this thing called H and I, right? And at the time, which stands for hospitals and institutions, yep. which um, you go into like either a jail or a detox, mm. and you bring a meeting into you know either adults or kids or whatever. So for a little while, I was going to a community college because like that's what you're supposed to do, right? I'm also Jewish, so like I had to go back to school at some point to be a doctor or a lawyer because that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, <laughs> but you, you you had dropped out originally. I right? did. I did. How how long did you make it? Um, before I went back, or after before you dropped out the the first time. Oh man, not not long. Really? Yeah. Like semester, not even? Uh maybe like two, three semesters. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And then I went back and um and I was doing H and I at the same time. And then I was trying to, you know, I was thinking about becoming like a clinical psychologist, because that's what you do, you get clean, you wanna yeah, like help you wanna exactly. fucking help everybody, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, you know, and I was I was bringing this meeting into a group of kids, man, in a detox. And um, and you're supposed to be able to like leave there and take it home with you and not take it home with you and um and man, I just fucking sucked at that. You know, every time I, I came home, like I couldn't sleep that night. Like it was, I mean, you hear just the worst things imaginable. Yeah. You know, and um, and I thought to myself, like, this isn't what I want to do for the rest of my life. You know, like I thought that I had to go this route of like going to college and, and getting a degree in something professional. And that had to be it. Right. Because like, what else do you do? And um so uh, I went ahead and I decided that it was, you know, it wasn't for me. And, um, you know, I kind of left. Well, I didn't leave school just yet. Right. So what I did was like, I, but I wasn't really going either. Yeah. Um, I figured if I stayed enrolled, then maybe like I had still had the option or something. Did Did you feel like, and so, so sorry for drawing or attempting maybe to draw like parallels no, between your, yeah, your yeah, guys' yeah. journey. But um, Mike's iterated to me that like he sort of, had felt like maybe a part of his life was l- taken or however you want it was lost to, to drugs and drug addiction, drugs, alcohol, whatever you want to call it. And so m- maybe now, I mean, maybe it's who you were. I mean, your whole family's like bubbly and like young and spry, but maybe the reason we get along so well is because he has the life experience of a 34 year old, but in a way he's still living the life of a 24 year old. Oh, the guy I, goes I, know out I know what you're trying to explain. I actually relate to that because I'm 35 and I feel the same fucking so, way. So, so I, know, I was going to say, do you feel like yeah, a 25 year old? Uh, I mean, look, I, um, you know, I got two kids, man. I got, I got a wife. So like, I like, but yeah, I still can't believe they let me leave the hospital with those fucking kids. You know what I mean? I'm joking. No, I mean, I mean, I, I, that's how I feel. I feel. The, the point that he's, he's referring to is, uh, Sci- science has has started to prove that those who suffer through a long bout of addiction 
uh, stop developing yeah. at the age that they That's become true. addicted to drugs That's because true. it takes over their entire life. They don't develop mentally, emotional, or in any mm -hmm. kind of intelligent manner, right? And so I was addicted from the age of 18 to 26, daily addiction to opiates. It was mm -hmm. the only thing in my life. I didn't do school. I didn't do family. I didn't do anything else besides yeah. use drugs. It was use and sell drugs. It was the only thing I cared about. Yep. When I turned 26, it was almost like I just turned 18 when I got clean. You know what I'm saying? And so now I'm 34, but a lot of times I feel like I'm 25, 26. Yeah. Um, and so that said, the one, the one note I'll say on it, and I'm sure you'll say the same thing is everything I got out of that time, I wouldn't trade it for shit. No. I wouldn't trade that, the, that life experience, that wisdom that I got from all those mistakes I made, the street smarts I took from that life. I don't want anyone to go through it, but damn, it gives, it, it's, it's, it's my basis for everything Absolutely. I do now. hundred percent, man. You everything. Take, but you, also, button, don't do drugs. Don't ever fucking don't, do no, no, drugs. It's not right? worth it. It really is. So no, no, you like y'all got lucky by the way. Like y'all, so I, I yeah, really yeah, want to yeah, make yeah, that very, very clear. Y'all, there are 99.999% of people who 100%. are either not here anymore or yeah. are the exact opposite, opposite position of you. You're still obviously working and growing and soon you'll be a macro influencer. No, but I'm, yeah. but, I'm, but, I'm, but I'm sure you too, man. Like, I mean, you know, how many people I'm sure have you been, I'm sure you've been to funerals of people that- They don't have, stop. Yeah, They don't ever. stop. I get, I get 100%. calls every week yeah. about another OD, especially dependent. Where are you from? Miami. Originally? Okay. Uh, up, up, we have, we have a similar- I think we're probably about in the same way. Florida's obviously got one of the worst pill problems ever. It hey, had, look, opiates was my drug of choice yep, for a long time, yep, bro. Yep. Oxycontin. <laughs> yeah. All hey, but why do yep. you still live in Miami? Because we were just talking like every time we go, it takes years <laughs> off our, our life. You know, um, my my father's still down there. My wife's parents are down there. Mm. It makes it easier when you have kids. Yeah. Are you, you able know? to Are you able to uh, to have a cocktail? No, I don't. Uh, so you're completely sober, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there any way you can transfer that knowledge to my friend, Mike? Well, here's the thing, right? So, like, <laughs> I think about it sometimes, right? So, like, I just, um, so I'll give you an example. You know, I've been, you know, in uh, in my clean time, I've been to Amsterdam for business. I just got back from a vacation to Italy with my wife. Where, where'd you go? In Italy? Yeah. Uh, Malfi Coast, uh, Greece. That must be nice, man. must be nice. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? We went to, I'm going to butcher their name, but like Bologna or whatever. Yeah, that's Bologna. right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mommy. You didn't go to Florence? No. Florence is the best city on the planet. But, but yeah, what's, yeah. what's the... So, uh, so, so I was there and like you see everyone having like a glass of wine, right? Because oh, yeah. like that's what you're supposed to do yeah, yeah. out there. And I thought to myself, and, and I was sharing this with a buddy of mine. I was thinking to myself, you know what I mean? I got like 14 years clean. I have all these things that are, that are going for me and everything else. And I remember like thinking about, you know, seeing someone having like a glass of wine and then they didn't finish it. Yeah. And I was like, it's still after all this time, dude, with everything to lose, I'm like, why didn't they finish it? <laughs> You know, like, mm. like we got a crazy, like we got fucking, a soldier down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why didn't you finish it? <laughs> yeah. You know, and then I thought, well, shit, you know, I'll probably have some of that and then have to go rob a CVS. Wow. But that's, you know? and you say, and you say, wow, but that's the path that it, it goes a lot of times, you know, yeah. like you, you start real small. I, I was very blessed, I guess, to get a couple years clean and I'm, and now I'm able to socialize and go, I don't yeah, promote look, it. I don't like it dude, for, for anyone. Sometimes I don't even like it for me, but you know, I'm able to go out and think, have drinks. You think, and it's I healthy? Never, you think that's healthy? It's not my place. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's a personal you, journey. I mean, it's your place to have an opinion. I know that for me, it's not healthy. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I'm not him. I don't know. You know I, and I mean? by the way, I don't know the answer. I'm not trying to, I'm just wondering. Yeah, look, sure. look, I know, I know for me that it's not healthy because for me, when I think about having one, it doesn't stop there in uh, my head. He can, he, he's yeah, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, 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 yes, exactly. Yeah, so, you know, why, for the most, for well, the most part. You know, Except so it's like, Logan's it's kind of like, why fuck with it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, all right, all right. Yeah. Here we go. Back to 23. When did you get rich? <laughs> so what happens is, is that, um, so I ended up, I ended up uh, trying to figure out other stuff to do, man. Like trying to figure out what I was interested in. Cause like you said, you, you know, you got to kind of grow up and yeah. figure out what it is that you want to do. And, um, you know, I started. Uh, you know, my buddy and I were coming up with these ideas and we were just being funny about it. Right. So we thought well, it'd be funny to create like this website, you know, and none of us had ever built a website before. And we thought it'd be funny to create this website where it was like, um, you know, like Pornhub meets like Maxim magazine. And like, we were, had this section penned out where it was going to be from like Jew to tattoo mm. as far as <laughs> all these like different formats. Right, right, yeah, right, right, right. right. So yeah. we thought it'd be funny. So like that night I went home and I had this old, fucking compact desktop computer in my room that like I hadn't turned on in forever. And, um, and I turned it on and, you know, I knew how to like download, you know, music or whatever. So I, I went ahead and I downloaded a, um, a copy of Photoshop nice. and I started, and I started messing with that and just the ability to like be creative 
you know, and, and the ability to, you know, just mess around with like what was going to be this, this website, even though I had no idea what I was doing, mm. like that process that night, I kind of fell in love with it. Like I didn't sleep that night, mm. you know, like, like I stayed up, I stayed up. I tried to figure out how to like make different graphics on there. And like that kind of triggered a lot of it. That's not easy. And, and I'm surprised. Did you, did you not have a creative outlet before that? Like you didn't know you like to paint no. perhaps or no, do I wheelies didn't. on a bike or nothing? Nothing really. Wow. How did that help you in your recovery? I mean, you know, look, I mean, it, I don't know how it helped me in my recovery, but it it helped me like, uh, you know, look, the recovery is all part of it, right? But like it it helped me, it helped me feel, you know, like it like uh, like inspired. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. I don't I don't I'm trying to think of the right word, you know, but it, it helped me feel it helped me feel inspired. And, I, and that that feeling that night is what I ran with this entire time. Mm. Was it that you needed to put the same energy you had um, in kind of that addictive nature to something productive and creative yeah, you know, and, and tap into like, you know, I feel like the, the majority of people I hear that have addictions, just it's just you're misguiding that in, that energy. I mean, that's true, yeah. too. But yeah, and I, look, I'm sure there's some element of that. I can tell you today, like 100 percent, I'm addicted to you know, building the next company or building the next deal or, or creating the next whatever. Right. Um, for sure today, but then, you know, and even today, but like then really it was, there was no money, there was no success. There wasn't any of that stuff. And none of that was front and, and center in my head. It wasn't, you know, and then, so what I did was, and then I taught, you know, long story short over the next year, year and a half, I basically locked myself in a room and taught myself how to do like web design, web development, wow. Photoshop. And like, I, you know, at that time, like YouTube was just kind of, you know, mm, people were mm -hmm. just putting uh, like the tutorial videos on YouTube. So yeah. you couldn't just search for that shit. Expert Village? I don't think that existed then, dude. <sighs> Can't Way back. That. Early. Can't imagine Early that. days. Well, I was talking to uh, Evan the other day and we were talking about tutorials and how when we were young, there were some tutorials on how to do some stuff. But now you can find anything on yeah. YouTube. Like, yeah. I remember when Expert Village was like the thing for how tos, like you know how to how to replace a muffler on a car. Yep. Yeah. Um, I remember trying to have to bounce a video in Premiere for the first time. There was no videos on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. And like I, that video was like, uh, it had like a big black box around it. I couldn't figure out how to yeah. make a 1080 video. It took me like <laughs> literally weeks. Well, because well, well, I mean, I know for me, the the word export. And the word file, what does that mean? It makes no sense. You have to right. learn the programming of a computer, and I didn't understand any of it. And so, yeah, it's it's fucking hard, especially, like, I'm really impressed that you were able to not only learn Photoshop, but web design, because I, I tried to do the same thing, and I gave up. <laughs> My first website ever was called Evone. It was everyone and everything, Evone, E-E-V-O-N-E. -E -E. I, I, the first article, like, I was, it was, I was, like, pretending to be a journalist, and I wrote about, like, Britney Spears, I think. Really? <laughs> Evone, yeah. Wait, what? I don't know this. Yeah, that's, that's, that's incredible. Sat in my room for like a week and I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be rich and famous. <laughs> but it sounds like you actually fucking made it happen. <laughs> like, I gave up. I gave up. Yeah. No, I mean, I guess I kind of evoned the situation. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> no, uh, I probably have some. No, I, I, no we have some. <laughs> <satisfaction>. Anyways, <laughs> no. So, um, so what happened was is that <laughs> I, uh, I started like my own little like web design business and I had no idea what I was doing. Most of the things that I've done that have been successful, I had no fucking clue what I was doing. You were faking it. A hundred percent. Were you, was this, was this <laughs> that's after? What you do. Yeah. That's the best way to do it. I, I mean the, never mind. We can't talk about the. I'd like to, can you give me a hint? No. I mean, it's the, it's the, the kid in the house. Oh yeah. The one, that other one that we can't talk about. Yes. Oh yeah. Of go course. Ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> were you, uh, were you already out of college when all I of actually, this started? I actually ended up dropping out of college. So I, a year into this, I'm still going to school kind of. And then I get into a year of it and I'm just like, you know what? I love this, you know, and I wasn't making that much money. I had a couple small clients for like a thousand bucks a month or something. It wasn't a lot, whatever it was. Mm. And, um, and I remember thinking to myself, like, this is it. Like, maybe it's not it as far as like web design or whatever, but like this being creative and building my own stuff, like that is it. Got it. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and I left school. Which was a really unpopular decision in my yeah, family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason I asked about school is because you said you went to a community college. I did. You were going to a community college. I went to a community college as well. And I found that 
it offered a robust selection of courses that lent themselves towards things I wanted to do. And if I wanted to take them, I like, I didn't know if I was even going to graduate and I didn't know if I really cared because what's a, what's a two year liberal arts, you know, associate really worth. But while I was there, I took a uh, Photoshop course and I started to take different courses in computer programs, different computer programs. And I learned a lot, dude. And so like, if you're at a community school and you have these electives, Take like a, take like a class that lends itself to, yeah, to like YouTube or like production or like video or whatever you actually want to do. Like use it for, just in case you don't use your degree, learn some stuff that you probably will use if you don't use your degree. Who doesn't use their degree, man? Doesn't everyone (laughs) use their degree? All right, so how, how, (laughs) how old were you when you made your first million? I was uh, 28. Okay. So we're fast forwarding a bit here. And then then how was that? Like how, how'd that happen? I, um, I remember, I remember the year before I had made like $962,000 and I was pissed Oh, oh hell yeah. because it was right there. You yeah. missed it. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, fuck. Yeah. And, um, and I remember the year that I, um, the, the first year that I did it was a year after I got married and I was like, okay. Nice. And ever, and since then it's been, a, it's just, it's come a lot easier. Right. So like getting to that first million was, was tough. But, but was That's that through one of the, saying. one of the domains you have? Cause you have a lot of, a lot of domains. Yeah, so, of, it, of, so, so what I do now is I market and, um, and advertise and create awareness for a lot of publicly traded companies, especially those in the, in the cannabis and the marijuana space. We own uh, marijuana stocks.com and some other websites. And you know, the thing is, is that like that, that's become like the, the, you know, like all of, that business has become like the bread and butter of what has really taken, you know, taken off and allowed me to like kind of live the life that I live today. But from that, we've, we've been able to spawn out a lot of other things that, you know, allow us to continue to build Mm. uh, as well. Yeah. And and you're doing one of those currently, right? Or setting up for it in the podcast is what I'm referring to because you uh, just started a, a podcast of your own. Yep. So Which, the, by the way, congrats. I hope you get more yeah, sponsors congrats. than we do. <laughs> actually make money from your- I'm sure, I'm sure you guys will do just fine. <laughs> What's it called? Entrepreneur? Yeah, so it's uh, it's called Entrepreneur. Cool. And uh, the premise of it is, is that we want to have on, it's a, uh, uh, we want to have like in-depth conversation with uh, entrepreneurs and people that are up and coming, influencers, celebrities, and, and regular people, man. Just people that are, you know, kind of like- get the idea of where they're coming from, what struggles they're going through mm. and where, where they are in their journey and how they made it to the other side. And, yeah. you know, ho- the, you know, the goal is to, is to do it in a way that people can find humor in and, you know, hopefully be inspired by. Is, is that, uh, it's guest based? It will be. Yeah. Are you sure? Sh- let me ask you this. Are you <laughs> sure that you want to come in the podcast space and compete with the number one podcast in the world? That being impossible, of course. No, I mean, look, <laughs> look I understand. He just said he had to warn. Him. Yeah, no, 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 I do no, no, want to let I get, you I get, I get. know. <laughs> but, okay, so entrepreneur. So you want if you listen to your podcast? What is it? Where you get rich all of a sudden? You no, know, you know no, how? Because <laughs> my question is, will it get redundant? Are, how many stories are, if you boil it down, essentially the same story about like rags to riches, or or is that? Can you find those kernels of wisdom in each one that may provide some sort of different value? Yeah, for so the, for the listener. So I, I think what's important is is that it it doesn't just become about how to make money, right? Because mm. that wasn't my experience. My experience wasn't yeah. I'm gonna wake up one day and just make money, right? My experience was is that I found something that I loved and I ran with it and I continue to build it out. Mm. So I think that there, will, of course, will be episodes where we talk to people that have a lot of money and that are successful. And there will also be people that we talk to in conversations that we have about finding what it is that you love to do, man. What gives your life purpose? Yeah. You know what That's I mean? Cool. Like, That's like, awesome. for, like I can tell you for me personally, I haven't felt like I've gone to work in many years. Yeah. yeah. Same, bro. Yeah. You, you Spencer, know? what gives your life purpose? Wow. Yeah, that that's, was, a, it's that's a, deep. That's a deep spot. question. It's a deep question. What gives, gives your life, life purpose? purpose? I would say just seeing other people find their purpose. Put him in the game, coach. He's our coach. He's the coach. When I I see someone become passionate about something that they do and I'm able to like help get them to that point, yo, that fuels me more. Who have you helped get to that point thus far? Anyone? Yeah, I would say quite a few people. Who? Like, I, I, content I put out, like what I stand for with my brand, like I get DMs all the time from people. That are getting into triathlons, or and that gets you. That gets you going. Or, yeah, it keeps you going. Keeps me going for sure. What about you, Mike? What's your life purpose? I like, uh, 
I like laughter. That's a good thing. I, I like people. It's great. I like it people to exhibit <laughs> laughter as well. Yeah, man. And, and You're also, so good at that. Uh, and also, I like randomness. And I like random things that make people laugh. You so, wouldn't expect me to talk about f- f- chocolate fudge right now, would you? But I bet you like it. I bet you two out of three people on the podcast <laughs> laugh right now. Fall three. He was right. He I mean, right. it's just like a gift. It's four that, people. Bro. Four. There's four people. Pre- oh, I didn't laugh at my own joke. That's good. Question for you. Yes, sir. Well, I'm in this relaxed fudge state. <laughs> Let's talk more. There is a subset of people that watch this show okay. that are interested in business. Correct. So that's my background. Okay. I, I just happen to be very funny, but I also am a brand and digital media expert at the highest level. Like yeah. speak on panels type shit. Do you, uh, so d- let me get what you did straight really quick. You built distribution platforms, you built websites, and now you serve programmatic ads for companies on those sites. Is that what you're doing or? Yeah. So we serve programmatic ads for companies on those sites. We also, um, you know, we build up retargeting pools and yep. have different newsletters. Um, we put together complete branded decks and, um, you know, investor relations kits, uh, you know, everything from A to Z. And, and so you do this, uh, you do this, the majority in the weed industry for marijuana, but also for other brands? Or? For, for every single industry. So I've done stuff in precious metals. I've done stuff in tech, uh, cannabis, uh, biotechnology, all of it. Is there still value in banner ads? What, what's a banner ad for those it's of you who ad don't know? That If you go on his website, marijuanamarket.com. Or, or marijuanastocks.com. And all, marijuanastocks.com. And you see a little banner at the top. Uh, right. Do you ever look at the banner or you just say, oh, shit, it's a banner. I'm I do. Here. I do. You look at the banner? Most people do not. There's a thing called banner blindness in the digital right. media space. Really? Yeah. yeah. Whoa, so people whoa. Are, have trained their brains to completely ignore banners. They become but, so desensitized. Wait, but also, yeah. also, if it's a if you got cookied and it's a brand you like, like how could you ignore? Like if if the Maverick logo pops up and someone from the Low Gang seat, like they're not, it's gonna catch that's their eye. What's called retargeting? Right. So that's, that's where retargeting. His, it, it direct response is uh, called. So uh, that's where his retargeting. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Stuff, there yeah. was already an interest. Okay. That's right. They're just seeing it and it's validating that interest in other places. Are you able to sell? Uh, we do uh, more advertise. native advertising. Oh, you do a lot of native artic- uh, yeah. articles. And yeah, a lot of advertorials, different native articles. Infographics? Yeah, when, when the time calls for it. Mm. <laughs> do you believe in infographics? I'm not asking selfishly because so, so, we're no, working. No, no. <laughs> we just paid no, 50000 no, so, so, I'll, I'll tell you what, actually. So, so we, 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 spend, we spend almost seven figures a month on marketing, right? Yeah. And Definitely you. I got to apologize for that one, man. Seven figures, you say? Want to reroute any of that over here? (laughs) (laughs) And I can tell you- Of other brand money? Yeah, 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 brand money. And and I can tell you that um, we've, you know, look, I'm sure you've seen it too, man. You just said it. The the market right now for people that are advertising online is extremely saturated, right? So everyone's doing what they, you know, the hot word is like clicks, right? Like Mm -hmm. everyone's doing clicks and most people don't know what that means or how to do it properly. And- what we're seeing is that we thought, well, the way to maybe stand out would be to make where they're going more interactive or pop out more. Maybe that's the way to do it because there's only so much you can do, you know, with a banner ad or anything else. So native. So right. that's where native comes so in. So we thought, so we did a, you know, we did a split test, which is, which means that like you, you know, see A-B what testing. one works, right. What yeah. one works as opposed to another. Mm-hmm. And I thought for sure that the infographic, when someone hits it, would capture someone's attention, they'd stay longer, right? There'd be less of a bounce rate. Mm-hmm. And um, and I was wrong. So one last question on this, because I don't want to, I don't know if Logan cares about any of this, but I, I know there are some business people out there, they're always in the comments like, we love when you talk about business. If you were a small brand, because we do have some small brands that watch the show, like clothing brands mm-hmm. um, that have like, you know, 10K on Instagram or like these new yeah. up and comers, what do you think the core metric they should be concerned with when it comes to running digital ads? Is it CTR, click-through rate, CPC, cost per click? Like what is, what is the, or awareness just based on cost per thousand impressions? Like what's a, or does, or does it vary? Well, I think, I think first and foremost for any business that's out there and they're spending money on marketing their brand or whatever, before you spend a dollar on what it is that you're doing, because everyone's like, oh, I want to get followers. Well, why? Why do you want to get followers? You can monetize followers. Well, I well, mean, that, that, yeah, should, yeah, yeah. that should be their but, answer. But the right? monetization of the follower means that you have some form of a goal. Mm. You have some form of an acquisition in mind for that follower or for that person looking at your thing or whatever it is, your widget, your podcast, whatever. You, you want them to take some sort of an action mm. from that. 
So what I, you know, my advice would be find out what your acquisition is, you know, mm -hmm. find out what is going to back out from you for you and work your way backwards. Mm -hmm. So then you can determine, well, this is a good return on investment for me. If I spent like, for example, I have a, uh, you know, I've sold a, a good amount of digital products online. If you sell a product for 500 bucks and it costs me $120 to get someone in the door, then like, that's not, that's not terrible, right? Yeah, that's a great, right. great margin. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so for me, that's based on a CPA basis yeah. for other times where I'm creating, you know, when people are focused on awareness for me, I'm looking at bounce rate. You know, I, ah, that's I interesting. yeah. So for me, I'm like, I don't care if they sign so it's up. Quality, quality right, of visitor. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it all comes down to the content, man. Your content has to be content is, you know, look, when I first started in this business in online marketing and, and all that content was king then. And mm -hmm. it's king now, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and it always will be, you could try any little trick you want. At the end of the day, you have to provide value to whoever's on the other end Facts. of that. Are you overseeing uh, the, the content creation when it comes to your businesses? Like, I, is, are you, are you, you a just, touch you point see, at least? least? Yeah, you're yeah, I am. Okay. For, for, for some of, for, for, I would say about 80% of it now, Got it. Mm -hmm. you know, we, you know, we have a lot of different brands that we've, you know, gone out with and, and we have a really good staff in-house that, that we use to- How many employees? Time. We have about 15 employees right, right now and nice. then about 16 different freelancers ah, out gotcha. there. So I, I try and put my hand on as much as I can, but like we're also expanding. So like we just, uh, we just opened up an office in Hong Kong. Oh, wow. Um, Congrats. It's expensive thanks. out there. Yeah. How, how much was that, that cost? <laughs> it, That's it, the most expensive real estate in the world. Yeah, yeah I mean, true. I didn't buy it. I rented it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's still, it's still the most still, expensive right It was still, <laughs> it, was, it was not cheap and it's not a very big office. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was why, more expensive why Hong than- Kong? Um, there's a lot of really great opportunity in the Hong Kong, uh, stock market right now. Are you getting into foreign stock markets or just um, Chinese? Yeah, no, I mean, we're, we're delving in a little I, bit. Am I diet going into some secrecy here? Eh, we're not ready What's yet. A, what? ah, I see some hesitancy. <laughs> What's, so you're, so get me involved. <laughs> hey, 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 I don't need your money. So you work Please as, give me your money. Uh, how much weed do you smoke? I don't, dude. No, you at can't, all. bro. What do you? He just talked about being well, sober. No, well, some, some. It, so, no, everybody's journey is different. Look, some yeah. people. Yeah, but did you not just hear? Here, <laughs> Spencer. Hey, had a little brain yo, fart. It's been a long day. Spencer, <laughs> not gonna catch hey, me slipping. Yeah, he was. He was testing. It was a test. It was, oh. it was very strategic. Oh, no, no, it was good. It was My good. Mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I knew it, which is why. So, so you, so. You run, uh, basically act as an agency to, to brands Correct. in the weed space and other spaces. And then you you have a market touch point as well, or you bring ba uh, brands public or you have some sort of- No, no. So the brands are already public. They come to us and they say, um, we're looking to increase awareness. Yeah, we yeah, want to yeah. market and advertise. So we take in their story and a lot of them are startup. Um, you know, some of them, um, you know, maybe right in the middle. And we work with them, you know, and we try and work with them long term. And, you know, for long term for us is anywhere between, I don't know, six months and a year. How did you, the, here's a, I try to keep bringing it back to the audience as much as possible. How did you get here? And the, the main question I would ask you is who was the first client? Because that's always yeah, the so most exciting actually, one. How did you make that step? 100%. And this is actually a funny story. So or I don't know about funny, but. You know. It's probably a story. It's it is it's definitely one hundred percent. It's a story. <laughs> That's good. Let's we'll start there. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I could add funny in if you want at some point. Right. Like, because, no. no, you are fudge funny. That's right. So That's we're good. That's true. So um, no. So what it was is, is that I started the web design stuff, and then I was working for a dental office. I was doing like their website, and um, they had tried a bunch of different marketing tactics. And this is when like social media marketing was like just starting to really blow up. So I convinced them to give me a little extra money to do marketing on Twitter and Facebook, like at the beginning. And I ended up doing uh, $200,000 in organic patient referrals for them without them having to spend any money on um, like paid ads. Mm. What? Just organic, you just organic mm -hmm. posting. And so I got them like on the first page of Google for everything organically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is back when these companies didn't charge like tons of money. Right? No way. <laughs> you dude. couldn't do that today with the same strategy. Could you or could you? Uh, I mean, I, I do it for my own stuff today. I don't do it for other companies today. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, in order to get that done now, that's that's probably what the majority of your freelance is. Is it article writing for SEO purposes? Or? Not just for SEO purposes, but it. I mean, the, the a lot of the SEO stuff, I still want to put my hand on because there's so many things changing in that landscape. And the littlest mistake or even the, the, the smallest inference that you're doing something wrong, you know, Google doesn't give a shit, man. They'll just penalize. Do you have an SEO person in house? 
over several, yeah. SEO stands for search engine optimization. There you go. Sure. There you go. No, no, How did you track? <laughs> so, Yo, they did uh, through a CRM. Uh, oh, the dental office had a CRM. Yeah, setup? no, the, the guy that read, so What's it was good? a, it was a. Um, oh, hold on, we got, got some beef yeah, here. Well, because I called you out. What's good, man? Just, uh, you guys, let's handle, handle, right? handle this. Handle this. No, I mean, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it. Well, you, so who had said that SEO doesn't stand for search? You go make me act up. Sit down. I Lucky am. you are. Who, who said that SEO does not stand for search? Just, Spencer did. No, I know, I know he, I in, a, in a certain way, knows it does. But you know, at the you same know what? time, no. what, do, what do you think it stands Spencer for? Spencer did maybe? Vima. Spencer did Vima, and that's why he's flawed. Spencer did Vima. He sold. If you don't know what Vima is, oh, you know. Remember that one kid at your high school would go around and be like, I have this drink. Here, sign up under me and you can sell the drink too. And if you sell enough, you can get a Mercedes with Vima. Did anyone get the Mercedes? Blast it on the side. I met a person who got the Mercedes and actually introduced Spencer to Jake and then Spencer introduced True. to me. So shout True. out Christian Sager, but also the Mercedes was fucking whack. Oh, was it an old? <laughs> it was, it was, what, there was a Vima or, or uh, what was it? It was Vima Verve, a Verve like Verve. watermark on the side of, by the way, the cheapest <laughs> version of the Mercedes. And I, I, I remember seeing it. I was like, it's all a facade. Even if you get the Mercedes, it's a pyramid scheme. Ready for this? No, it's not a pyramid scheme. Even our cameraman is from the old Vima squad. They're like, all I mean, they're from the all old Vima squad. I've never heard of this. It's a well, network. Well, I'm network. glad you did it. <laughs> you ever heard of Bernie it, Madoff? Yeah. Imagine he was an energy drink. <laughs> that's fucked up. It's fucked it's up. Called, that's not an energy <laughs> well, drink listen, you want to drink. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you, you um, explained to me, and I'm going to tie this together. You explained to me you're doing some sort of workshop, correct? So, uh, or you do some sort of business uh, seminar, conference. seminar, conference, learn how to be a business person type we're, thing. Yeah, we're, so we're developing that product now is what we're doing. And we tried it out on uh, three different uh, three different individuals. Mm -hmm. And um, and it... it you know, look, one of one of the individuals thought that you could just, you know, like mo like a lot of people, I feel, think that you can just pay something and have a business overnight. Yes. <laughs> and that's and that's what the most the majority of people think. And and, and yeah. not to I mean, Ty Lopez was a guest on the show, but are you familiar with the Ty Lopez business? I, I, I sometimes fear when you sign up for like a Ty Lopez thing and we asked him, I'm like, is this a scam? And he goes, he, what you're probably going to say is as long as you put in the work, it it. I mean, it could work. Yeah, no, no. Look, I, I think that I think it depends on on what you're interested in and what and what people uh, and and the effort. That, it, it, but that's true for anything. Mm. You know, if yeah. if you have a hobby or something you're interested in or something you're going to school for or whatever, it's it that you have to want to put in the work. Mm. You know, you can't. I mean, obviously, man, like you probably know better than anyone. You didn't just show up here and have a podcast. You know, you yeah, had to, you had to put in the work. I put in the so, work. So just because somebody is willing to teach you something or put a product on the table that has some tool to help you get into something new or something else, if you don't put the work in, that's fucking on you. <laughs> yeah. We had we had some kid uh, show up. Actually, it's happened twice in the past couple of weeks. This kid showed up um, somewhere where we were at and he came up to me. He's like, I got to talk to you. And Logan, I got to talk to you. I want to let you know you, you guys have really really oh, inspired me. <laughs> you have inspired me so much. You have given me a dream and I've had this dream now for the past six months. It's great. It's a great dream. And I said, you going to do anything or what, like, what, what have you, what steps have you taken so far to accomplish that dream? And I said, for example, his dream, by the way, was to become a YouTuber. Okay. And I said, okay, where's your camera? Can you imagine if you had exercised that dream and when you came up to me and Logan, you were able to say, Logan, Mike, what's up? You guys inspired me. You just got a video on YouTube with 250,000 views because me and Logan are in it. Mm -hmm. Where's your camera? And he's yeah. like, well, I uh, uh, the dream so far has been really good, but uh, the camera hasn't been part of the dream. I'm like, bro, leave right now. <laughs> Was this go a get a fucking camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, leave right now. Go get a fucking camera. I'll even I'll even let you hit me up on Instagram and come meet me again with the camera in a few hours. Yeah, Mike really tried to help him out. Here's I always the thing. Here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to take it a, a step further <laughs> okay. because the first camera that I ever shot on was a butthole. Was it a flip? Compared to this. Oh, yeah. This is, oh, yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. This that's shoots true. 4K oh my God. at 60 yeah, frames. Yeah, that's true. Like even, this, and it texts anybody. It accesses the internet. You can ask any question and have it answered. Like, Ridiculous. If you are complaining about getting started today, <laughs> woo, woo. Do you know what my, do you know what my first, do you know what my first camera was? 
It was a kit, it was a tripod like Andre's using, and then it was a box with a hood. You had to put your head under it and turn a crank. Shut like the this. fuck up. You're lying. And it went like this. And it went, and it went uh, like this. I think he's making a joke. It went like this. <laughs> like the one in King Kong. <laughs> right. Jack right. This right, is right, right. like this from the early 1900s. <laughs> yeah, that's not accurate. <laughs> Unless. <laughs> Do Unless. we know Mike's 34? I could sure. be 76. 340? I mean, I'm just glad that I'm not the only one in my 30s sitting here. So. Well, that's oh, it's been happening more and more often. Yeah. Because to be honest with you, with the exception of these two, a lot of times it takes a few years before you got a really cool story to tell. And yeah. so like you know, a lot of people we've been having on now are like 30 plus. These two are the exceptions because <laughs> fucking this dude's a classic vegan, just man it's all true. of a sudden. It's and true. this guy over here is just a freaking controversial YouTuber. Yeah, look at him. It's so controversial. I got a question. <laughs> when sure. I start making guap, or when somebody, let's just say I'm chilling in Illinois and I start making some guap, what do I do? Do I save? What do I do with my money? Oh, that's a really good question. Right? Go to pennystocks.com. Founded by me. Adam Haven. <laughs> Adam Hawk. <Hockey. laughs> what's, what's fucked up is that I actually own that domain, right? No, I know. I know. That's why I use the example. No, I know that. But not so, um, Petty Stocks, Jordan Belfort. That's how it started. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. But, you know, hopefully not the same ending, right? Yeah. So, well, um, <laughs> hey, believe it or not, things are pretty good with No, Jordan. and God bless, man. Did you see his episode with us? God <laughs> bless. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I was, there's like a whole part in there I kind of want to fast, you know, skip. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, yeah. Um, it's pretty rare. Yeah. 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 yeah so, so far, so good. <laughs> You know, been in, been in the business 12 years so far. Yeah. So good. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a good question. Right. So, so here, here's what happened at the beginning when I started to make some money, right? Mm -hmm. Some money, because when I first, you know, when I first started, like my wife co-signed my first car, you know, and like I had like no credit and all that stuff. And I, you know, all those things have built up over time. But when I started to make some money, you know, what's the first thing you do when you start to get a little bit of money? You buy a, buy a, a hundred a what? G wagon? Nah, I'm not a G wagon guy. Right. Ooh, yeah, I'm wow. sorry. Buy, a um, buy some, you buy shit. You buy, you buy shit, shit. <laughs> bro. I went fucking nuts with the cars. <sighs> Anything? What'd you get? What'd you cool? get? Too much. No, what'd you get? A lot. Like what? Name one of the, name name one the coolest name one you got. Well, cool, all right, one of the coolest. The, the coolest one that I have now is if you're a Porsche guy. I am. Okay, so I have? have I have uh, I think it's number three fourteen of five hundred. Um, for the 911 Turbo S exclusive, Spider? Oof. No, the exclusive. Do you know what that is? I don't. But so when the when S. the 918 came out, there was a bunch of like uh, like other cars that came out with it. So yeah, it's that gold one right there. You and oh my god, yeah. How much was this car? Uh, Too much. Three thirty when I got sexy. it. Sexy. What's, it, what's it valued at now? Three sixty or something. It went it's going up. up. Yeah, it it's went going up. up. But wow. mine is wrapped in like a black satin wrap. Wow. So with dope. like a custom titanium so exhaust. Dope. I went nuts with it. And you just drive that shit down Collins or what? No, no. I said they sit in my. They all sit in my garage. Yeah, cars aren't the best investment. No, it's not good, right? So like, but that's when I first started, right? And like to this day, I'm still kind of fucked up with it. Like yeah. I just um. What else did I get? Um, I've had like a bunch of 911 Turbo S's. I've had an Aventador. I just traded the Aventador for the Ferrari. Yeah, if, you, if you need me to whip it, uh, I'll do yeah. it. Spencer can drive well. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so you'd st you're done buying cars or probably not? No. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think one, one piece of advice that, and I'm sure you'll recognize this, that could go out to someone who has started to make a little bit of money, right? right. Like I think some of the people watching our well, show may have just made their first 50, 60 grand. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? The, the the wisest advice from somebody like Buffett or some like in that level would say is get rid of any high interest debt you have before you save any money. I mean, like, right. yes, you want a small nest egg to rest on, but if you are saving all your money and you have 18% APR on your interest mm -hmm. uh, on your credit cards and you're spending all that in interest, you have to pay all that debt off before you're yeah. saving all your money. Well, well so here, right? here's the thing with the with, with the car thing, just going back for one second. What I the way I looked at it. Right. Was that, you know, I used to buy. So I've always loved cars, man, you know, yeah, man. Um, and I used to buy five hundred dollar cars off Craigslist, you know, <laughs> until they would fucking die. And I used to like uh, put the screwdriver in the car to turn it on. We had one that we called the rim rider because it would just bounce up and down Whoa. like a basketball. <laughs> um, and I always thought to myself, like, if I ever fucking did well, man, like I'd want to, you know, get a couple nice cars. Right. That uh. was just my thing. But when I first started to buy them, I thought to myself, like. Like I kind of use it as a motivator. So like, you know, I got uh, it uh, uh, yeah. and then I, and then I was like, all right, I'm going to work twice as hard to make sure that yes. I continue to earn it. Yes. In, in a, in a roundabout way, 
<laughs> I I would I think I, I think when I got the G Wagon, I had like a pretty solid amount of money to buy. It's like a three hundred thousand yeah, dollar yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. I had a, I had a I was definitely like safe and stable, but it was my business manager said straight up like you should not buy this car because you know they're being safe and conservative. You should not buy this car. It's not a great investment. <laughs> um, but it, it lit a fire under my ass because yeah. now I wasn't safe anymore. Right. After I spent it, I was like I was like okay like. I do got to work a little harder to, mm-hmm. to, to make sure I, I don't lose all my money. And to be able to put gas in it. Well, you know what's, oh, yeah. you know, but you know what's true, man? Yeah, up. it's like 120 yeah, it's per, super expensive. Per, it's crazy. But you know, you know what's worse than feeling um, than feeling like uneasy or whatever? is feeling safe, bro. Oh, yes. oh feeling For safe sure. sucks. Feeling safe yeah. sucks, man. So I get dangerous. my most anxious when I feel like, oh, man, I can just coast. Yep. Cause that that's so I was I, on that way for a little bit. Now I'm back in this shit. <laughs> Do you think watch out YouTube? The people that say, "Ooh, I'm gonna wait." To do that until I'm safe and comfortable is that a mental trap for people? So, you know, I, I mean, it depends. You know, for me, you know, look, it, it was easy for me to to take certain risks, man. Like I didn't, you know, at the time I wasn't married. Like I would, you know, we were engaged or whatever, but like we had no kids. Like so, if I failed, I wasn't going to be any worse than I already was. Yeah, true. You know what yeah, I mean? It could only go up. So like if, but if you have like a family and kids and, and responsibilities and you're like, oh, I just made a little bit of money. Let me go buy a hundred thousand dollar car. <laughs> you're kind of an asshole. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, here's what I would say. Do, you know, sp- spend your money on what, you know, on, on the things that you want because you work for it and you can't fucking take it with you, you know, but yeah. don't be so financially irresponsible that if the world blew up tomorrow, You'd be fucked. Yeah, yeah. Find the balance. It, this is a, this could be a stupid question. I don't know. No, I, was, it's fine. I was thinking it's about it in the shower. Let her rip. Yeah. yeah. Like a, if I make a million dollars, and uh, <clears throat> obviously you have to pay taxes on it. Mm-hmm. Let's say let's say half a million for sake of math. Mm-hmm. I, I pay half a million dollars worth of taxes. If I invest a hundred thousand of that mm-hmm. into a company, is that considered a write off, or do I have to? No, no, no it's not. that's like that's after taxes one hundred thousand dollars out of my still pocket. Your money. Yeah, you it's still your expensive. money that you're putting in. You just and up- depending, yeah. and actually depending on how long, and I'm not an accountant, right? But depending on how long you leave it in that investment, you either pay short term or long term capital, capital gains. gains on it, which so is like, massive. which is massive. Mm. It's like thirty. So like anything that you invest in, you want to leave it there for like. And just my experience, I, I leave it there as long as possible. Really? Okay. Because long term gains are taxed substantially are way less. Short term, short term gains are like no. Yeah, I, 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 I told you this before we started the podcast. I um something about business, even some of the stuff you were talking about in this podcast, like 10% of it, I'm not gonna lie. I it's almost like you're speaking another language, which is odd for me because I'm a smart kid and I know it, but business specifically. One one thing I like that I think is interesting is that to think about is like people's for me, like I was always like, I can't wait to make a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And I was like, I'm so excited about that. And so Something to think about about the the investment number you just used is is if you could ever get a million dollars into an investment plan Mm -hmm. and expect to take a pretty moderate return on it, let's call it ten percent annual. That's I know that's that's actually that's pretty aggressive, but I think I think it's doable with the right with the right people, right? You can potentially make a hundred thousand dollars a year for the rest of your life off that million dollars. Potentially, yeah. Potentially. Uh, yeah, you'll yeah, have yeah, yeah. bad I mean, years, but you'll have good years. I mean, I, yeah. I, eight I had, to 10% is not unheard of, right? No, but but no, normally people are making that money when they're putting in a lot more, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, look, it, it depends. You know, some people put their money in like a like an interest, uh, you know, a high interest account that gives you back that That's kind like of return. 1%. Right, yeah. it, whatever. Um, you know, for me, I've always taken a lot of the money that I've invested. Like I've put it into real estate recently. Um, you know, like I have, uh, two homes in Miami, hmm. um, you rent stuff out or not yet. Um, still trying to make my peace with the fact that someone else would live there. So I'm like back and forth between like, you know, I fix it up. I'm thinking about selling it, but it's just kind of sitting there for sale right now. I got, I got a chick living in my house right now, back in Connecticut. Nice. Shout out, she paying shout, rent out still? shout out Emily. She, she yeah, paying, every day, right on awesome. time, Emily. Every, every single day. Huh? You're amazing. I don't even ask her. I just that's get a fantastic. Venmo. First of the month, I get a Venmo. That's fantastic. Send that's it right great. over to the yeah. bank to pay the mortgage. Ta- taxes suck, dude. Yeah, bro, you're telling me. <laughs> so, so <laughs> he knows all about that shit. No, and you know what? And there's and, and honestly, like you have two choices. You either you either pay it or get fucked. Yeah. So <laughs> that's it. And trust me, you, my mom taught me at a young age. 
FBI, you could finagle it sometimes. Uh, you could even mess with a bunch of government agencies. The one people you don't fuck with. IRS. Is the low the, gang? Uh, is the IRS. And dude. the low gang. And the low yeah, gang. You, just, the, just, 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 you make the money, you just pay your taxes. The IRS will come <laughs> after you. And if and if they're like, you're like, uh, you can't garnish my wages. I have to feed my children. They're like, fuck your kids, dude. Like, we're going to take all of our money from you. Like, they don't have any compassion whatsoever for your problems. Um, pay your taxes on time. Uh, okay. So, so if I'm uh, somebody out there and I have nothing, no idea about taxes or whatever, which is probably the majority of people because school doesn't teach us hardly anything about taxes. <laughs> Square dance. So what's like the first thing I should know with taxes? Like Get mentally a, when I'm making yeah. money, what's the smart way to look at it? Just know that you have a partner and that partner is the United States. Damn. So, <laughs> um, you know, get a good accountant. I'm not an accountant. I have a good accountant, you know, um, and I let them deal with it. Okay. Smart. Sharp, yeah. A sharp, sharp advice. Thank you, bro. I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to do, I want to go to the audio only right now. It's this, but audio only. Sure. I love that tagline, by the way. I've been saying it a lot. That's great. Is there anything um, we missed? No, I mean, I, uh, I think, I think we covered most of it, right? Okay. I mean, I, yeah. I felt good. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But also, if not, great. we do continue this on the audio only, which <laughs> <laughs> we're about to do on Spotify and iTunes. Adam, bro, thank you for coming on. No, thank you very and, much. And you, can they look out for Entrepreneur, your podcast? Yeah. It's now, good. right now, it's happening now? Well, it's going to be happening real soon, right? Okay, okay. So if they if they go on uh, uh, my Instagram page, which or is? whatever, which is uh, at Adam Hyman, okay, that's cool. H-E-I-M-A-N-N. Cool. Um, you know, we'll be announcing it soon and, and, you know, going from there. Very cool. Awesome. Very cool. Thank you for coming so, on and blessing yep. us with, with, your, with your business. No, no. Wisdom, thank you brother. for having me, man. It was a pleasure. Thank of course. you. On uh, Spotify, iTunes right now, audio only. Rate us five stars. Hit that thumbs up. We'll see you next time. Hit that that's subscribe button too. Take it easy, man. Peace. I understand. It doesn't need to be said. Yes. No, I'm not going to say it. That's why I didn't say it. But do you think you have to cut your fingernails? <laughs> yes. You really do. To finger a girl. No, yeah. not, no, that's oh, not oh, what I that's fucking what I meant. You were saying. Yes, it is, but I meant, do oh, you shit. think you have to cut your fingernails for tonight? Oh, yes, duh. You, it, you, you're you going to get you, it, that, you're going there? <laughs> what did you just say? Gonna, <laughs> yo, all right, let me put it this way. 